using everybody's first names present are Detective Dick Spitler, interviewee Colin Strickland, and Colin's lawyer, Claire Carter. Claire makes sure that Colin gets to pick his own seat. They make sure Colin is comfortable and they begin. So we're starting about halfway down the page here. Dick, before before we start anything, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, you're very, very clear. You're free to go at any time. Yeah, you're, you don't have to stay down here. At any point in time, if you're like, I've had enough, I'm done, I'm ready to go, that's 100% up to you. Colin, I wasn't even, I wasn't even considering that the last time. I, I just wasn't even, didn't have like any dick. Oh, you were going through a whirlwind of emotions last time. Yeah. So, Colin, anyway, neither here nor there. Dick, yeah, everything turned upside down, so I get it. Colin, "Uh uh-huh. Dick, all right. But, so I do want to say, so I was able to go back and corroborate a lot of the stuff that, that you ended up telling me the last time, like where you were and what all mapped and where and where you had been and stuff. And so I definitely do appreciate how honest you were about all that stuff. Colin, absolutely. Dick, you know, it definitely helped out. And like I said, I was able to corroborate every single thing you said. So... I know for a fact that you weren't lying about that stuff. Colin, sure, Dick. So I do appreciate all that stuff. Colin, seems obvious, but Dick. So that night, that, so you leave the pool burger. Colin, yes, sir, Dick. And you go from there and you head back to, to where Mo was staying. Colin, yes, Dick. Over at Cash's house? Colin, yes, Dick. When you pulled up, What was it that was the first thing? I mean, basically, I guess, really, whenever you pulled up, like, what was it you saw? Colin, I don't have any... I've been there about four four or five times in the past. I'm going to stop here. He's not answering the question. He's giving information that wasn't asked for, and he is not giving a direct answer. So, right here, there's a red flag. Let's see how that turns out. Dick. Uh Uh-huh. Colin. And I just don't have any, I've never actually driven, I've only been in a via, in in a car, I guess. Dick, yeah. Colin, I've never been there on a motorcycle, so I've never actually driven into the alley, ever. Dick, Uh uh-huh. Colin, so my experience before would be parking on the street, kind of at the front of the main house. Dick, okay. And then walking, I guess. I don't know. I think it's I'm going to stop here. He has still not answered the question and given a bunch more information that wasn't asked for. I find it interesting that his normal routine when he goes there is to park and then walk. And he's not answering the question. Red flag, red flag. So wa- the question then is, what is he doing? Is he buying time to think? Is he trying to hide a specific thing? Why is he so nervous about this question? It's actually not a tough question. He's not being pressured. Not only that, he has his attorney with him, and the detective has bent over backwards trying to make sure that Colin is comfortable. Okay, next page. Colin. I think it's the kind of east-west al a different alley east-west. Dick. Okay. Colin. And then, so this is the first time I'd ever driven a motorcycle, you know, because I didn't want to, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't like, like, I don't know. It was my first experience driving a motorcycle there. So it wasn't really, I can't compare it to anything. It wasn't, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Any cars parked in the alley. You know, it's a narrow I'm going to stop here. On the one hand, he's saying, look, I've never been in that alley before, so I might not know if there was anything out of the ordinary. But the other thing he's doing here is talking in half sentences and explaining. And that's always something to twig an interviewer that there's something going on here. Dick. Uh Uh-huh. Colin. I just didn't see anything that comes to mind in terms of like things that are set in my mind that could have been unusual. Dick. Yeah. Colin. Or tripped a flag is unusual. Dick. Yeah. Colin. Or that, that experience. Dick. Yeah. Colin. I'm just pulling into this alley, dropping a friend off. I mean, it wasn't really... Dick. Oh, of course. Colin. Scanning the... I mean, it's East... It's New East Austin. It just... 
Dick. Yeah, Colin. Doesn't strike me as a place where I need to be. Dick. Yeah, Colin. On edge. Dick. Yeah, Colin. So I, I can't say there's anything. Dick. Okay. So as you, Colin, that came to mind about that moment. Dick. Yeah, Colin. Whenever we pulled up to this. Dick. Okay, Colin. The door, the bottom of the stairs. Dick. Uh Uh-huh. So once you, as you're coming down the alley and you're pulling up, stop at the bottom of the stairs, was there anybody, anybody like hanging out around there? Colin, I wouldn't be dick. Was the, was the gate closed to the fence? Was the gate open? Colin, what fence? Dick. So the, so you know, like, so you have to, so you have the, so you have the stairs that go up and then you have like the like little grassy area right here. And then like further behind that is an actual gate. Colin, I don't, I don't know what area, what grassy area. You mean like on the same property? Dick. Yes. Yeah. Colin. Or do you mean on a different property? Dick. Yeah. So it, I mean, it's, I call it a grassy area. So Colin doesn't know that there was a grassy area. I mean, he was there. Interesting how he doesn't know that. That is where Moe's bike was found, hidden after the crime. Colin. Okay. Dick. It's, I don't even know if I would, Colin. Again, I don't have a frame of reference with that. I don't have a vision. I don't have a visual impact of what that gate looks like. Dick. Yeah. Colin. So I couldn't tell you if it was closed or open. Dick. Okay. Colin. I imagine, yeah, it's a garage apartment and there's a garage. Dick. Uh huh. Colin. So I'm, it makes sense there's a gate under the stairs. Dick. Yeah. Colin. But I couldn't tell you whether it was Dick. Okay. Then, yeah, nothing like that stood out to you. Colin. No. Dick. Okay. Then what about Colin? Wasn't, I don't remember anything ajar. I mean, again, I just wasn't, I have a passenger and the most dangerous time on a motor, well, not most, but it's always when you're at low speed, it's always very danger. You know, it's a high chance dick. Yeah, Colin, of tip over because you don't have inertia. So I just, at that point, I'm always really like focused on coming to a rest without you know, tipping over. He's talking in half sentences again and giving some extra explanation. He could have just said, no, I didn't, or I don't know. Dick. Yeah. Colin. So I wasn't like scanning. Dick. Okay. Colin. The scene. And then I had my attention on Mo. She's, you know, I opened the case for her to get her things. And that was, that was all I had in my mind. I mean, I would, I would definitely note anything that would be Dick. Yeah, Colin. Like striking or dick. Yeah, Colin. Out of the ordinary. Dick. Okay. Is there, whenever you're stopped and you're sitting there, I know you mentioned something the last time about the garage door. Colin. I, yes, the garage door was ajar, but I'm now, I'm certain that was when I picked her up, which was around in the afternoon. Dick. Okay. Colin. You know, five or something. And it was, the garage door was this much open. Dick. Yeah, I'm going to stop here. This is a critical piece of information. And Colin has just now changed his story. In the affidavit and application for arrest warrant, Detective Spittler specifically states that Colin noted the garage door was closed. Here, we're seeing Colin actually initially said it was open a little bit. And now he has changed his story. This is critically important because when Mr. Harris went into his garage and had that door open a little bit... That's when he heard somebody fleeing the scene. Somebody rushing down the stairs, rushing out of Moe's or Cash's apartment. And he heard a bike racing down the alleyway. So whoever he heard was likely the killer. And so whether or not that garage door was open is important. If Colin is now saying, oh, it was it was at five o'clock not later, then I hope somebody asked Mr. Harris if he was also in the garage at five o'clock as well as later in the evening at the time when he heard all the kerfuffle. And it bothers me a little bit that the detective put this in the affidavit as if it was fact, as if it was clear. And clearly, Colin was not sure. And Colin changed his story. Colin And I just remember saying, oh, your landlord, not your landlord, Cash's landlord, has a couple of cool Porsches. Dick. Yeah. Colin. An old 944, and I think it was a Boxster RS because the garage was, like, open enough. The garage was open. Dick. Yeah. Colin. You could see the tags on them. Dick. Okay. 
Colin. But that was it, Dick. Whenever you came back, was that garage door, was it closed all the way now? Or do you remember? Colin, I think it was closed at that point. I think, Dick. Yeah, Colin. I'm sure it was. I didn't notice. I would have noticed. But he just finished saying he only thinks it was closed. And this is his second story. Dick. Yeah, Colin. It was a white Porsche Boxster. So I would have noticed because it's, you know, it was dark. It was like get almost twilight. And that car would have been white. I would have noticed it because I'm very perceptive of just color. From racing a bicycle, you're hyper tuned to things. He just finished saying he wasn't paying attention to all that stuff. And there was a whole bunch of stuff he didn't notice. But he's hyper tuned. Okay. Dick. Yeah. Colin. Crashes everything. So I'm good at noticing things in my field. Dick. Okay. Colin. You know, so Dick. Do you remember? Colin. Didn't notice. Oh, something white. Dick. Yeah. Colin. Oh, it's the Porsche. Dick. I got you. Colin. So I would be 99%, 90% sure it would have been closed. It would have been closed? Not it was closed? Hmm. Dick. Okay, call it. That's all I can say. Dick. And was there, was there anything sitting? Like, because you know where cash parks, right? Colin, I don't. Dick. So, like, right there next to the stairs, there's that little carport area. Colin. Okay. Pulled in under the stairs? Dick. Yes. Colin. Okay. Dick. Yeah. And so, was there any car right there? Colin. No. Dick. Was there, Colin, not that I, not that, I mean, not that I would have noticed because I would have been in close proximity to where we pulled up. I stopped probably like I would stop, like I'm just, I don't have exact, I would stop four feet from the stairs. Dick. Yeah. Colin. And I would have been in like the zone. Dick. Okay. Colin. I would have been trying to maneuver it and I don't remember any obstacles of any kind there. So I think it was an empty. Dick. Okay. Colin. Empty spot. If there was a car there, I would have noticed it. Dick. Okay. Colin. Absolutely. Dick. And so you mentioned that you originally, I think you said sometime like around 545 or something. I can probably help with time, but sometime, sometime around that general time is whenever you went and picked her up originally. Colin, I, I can't, I would have to see my phone. Dick. Of course. Yeah. Colin. I texted her when I was I potentially hit a traffic jam for the closure at, at essentially at MLK near the stadium, Dick. Yeah, Colin. That was like insane because they had the entire MLK from Lavaca all the way to 35 was funneled to one lane, Dick. Uh-huh. Colin. And there's a series of stoplights. It was a little cluster F of like people jammed. People can't get through the light because it's still traffic. Then another, it was this wayscape issue of, so I actually went because I'm, I'm like a bike cyclist at heart. So I'm like trying to avoid it. So I went and did like a little, tried to cut up the like by the, I'm going to stop here. First of all, again, not answering the question. And you notice again, he's speaking in half sentences. Why? He says he potentially hit a traffic jam. Potentially? Did he or did he not? And he's providing explanation and this big narrative of something they didn't ask for. Instead of answering the question, he's nervous and he shouldn't be. They know what time he went together. They've got them at Poolburg. It's not like anybody's accusing him of committing the crime at all. And they're certainly not accusing him of committing the crime at the time he picked her up. So what is here that Colin Strickland is not saying? There's something here. Next page. The, by the, I'm just trying to get through this traffic jam. Dick. Oh yeah, yeah. Colin. I pulled towards, this is when I'm still like near the university. Dick. Uh-huh. Colin. And I've ridden my bike through there. I went to school at UT. So I know there's like uh, bicycle routes up through there. And I was going to try to get onto the, anyway, I did like a couple of little like loops looking for a way to get away from this thing that looks like a, a five or like a 10 minute delay. Dick. Uh-huh. Colin. So, you know, then I saw there was an event. There was an event or something and there were little parking guards who were like, you can't go through here. You can't cut up to the... Anyway, it's neither here. I mean, it is relevant, but it's Claire Carter. This is how you got there? Colin. This is how I got there the first time. 
Wow. Makes me wonder if perhaps he was doing loops somewhere where he shouldn't have been and is preemptively providing an explanation. There's something up. There's something here. And his lawyer pipes up and directs his answer. Pretty much. We'll carry on. Dick. Yeah. Colin. So I don't know exactly when I arrived because it was such like a Dick, of course, Colin, which I'm sure you can see like Dick. Yeah. And of course, and that those I'm not, I wasn't sticking you to a straight time. I just remember it was some time around there. But what I was trying to get was more of whenever, whenever you did get there and stopped your motorcycle, you get off. Colin. Uh Uh-huh. Dick. Did you go up the upstairs at that point? Colin. I did. I went up the stairs. Dick. And so as you go up the stairs, like, what do you see? Colin. I see, I see Moe's bicycle travel case. Dick, Uh uh-huh, Colin, bundled up, just like as you would do if you were, you know, you'd unpacked your bike. And it's a big floppy, it's a big floppy case that essentially fits over a bicycle. This is important. He says he went up the stairs. If they later found his DNA up there, he has an explanation. He can say, well, yeah, I told you I went up there. Next page. It's a travel case for the airport. Dick. Yeah, Colin. And I see that like almost like tacoed sitting like running parallel to the stairs on the deck. Dick. Okay, Colin. And I see that to the right. I notice that. Dick. Okay, Colin. And then I just go up to the door. I knock. She answers it. I don't think, I don't think I texted. I'm not, I don't remember if I texted. I'm here or not. Dick. Yeah, Colin. It's possible. So I walked up to the door, knocked, knocked on it. It's a tiny apartment. Dick. Yeah. Colin. So she opened the door. We, I'm, I think we hugged. Dick. Uh Uh-huh. Colin. Probably. I would see that as like obvious. I'm, and then I, then I see her, her bike is like right next to the door. Dick. And inside? Colin. So imagine this is the entry to the Dick. Okay. Yeah. Colin. So she's here. I'm outside. I knock on the door. Her bicycle is sitting to the left as you enter. Dick. Okay. Colin. The couch is sitting right. They have a low couch. So I just come in and I sit right here. Dick. Okay. Colin. On this couch. And I, after we hugged and she's grabbing at, she's rolling up like a towel, getting a bathing suit, putting it in, I think like a tote bag. And I don't, I didn't notice. We just started chatting. You know, we hadn't seen each other in a a few weeks. And I don't know. I don't know exact. That was probably three to five minutes, Dick. Yeah. Colin. Probably less than five. I don't know how it could be more than five minutes, Dick. Yeah. Colin. Because there was no, like, activity that she had to do to get ready. It was just grabbing a couple of random pool things, like, Dick, yeah, Colin, a swimsuit and a towel, and Dick, okay, Colin, putting them in this bag, Dick, okay, Colin, and I don't, I don't remember, I think she was wearing sandals, because I made a, I just made a mental note, because I like people to wear clothes, shoes on my motorcycle, he made a mental note, but he only thinks she was wearing sandals, okay, Dick, yeah, yeah, I bet, Colin, because it's, it's a massive, when it goes wrong on a motorcycle, it can be really catastrophic, Dick, yeah, Colin, so that was just something I think I noted. Hmm. And why is he talking about her shoes, Dick? Uh-huh. Colin. Yeah. So then then we close the door. We go down the steps. Dick. Okay. Colin. To the motorcycle. Dick. Okay. And extremely small detail. I don't know if you'll remember or not. So when you go up and you knock on the door, she comes to the door. Do you remember if she actually unlocked the door or did she just kind of like reach and just open it? Colin, I don't remember that. Dick, okay. Colin, I didn't have that note. Dick, okay. And so then all that, Colin, I grew up in Austin. We never locked our front door. But I mean, she's not from here. So she, but she is from Vermont. So I mean, I don't know. But I don't know. I never even considered like security. Dick, yeah. Colin, as a thing, I have no reference of her relationship. Dick, okay. Colin, with door security is. Dick, I got you. Colin, so I don't recall. Dick, do you know kind of what her her routine would be? Like if she, if she just got home someplace or just walked inside someplace, like, do you know like how she would kind of like settle down or relax or like what those steps she would take would be? Colin, I have, I have no idea. I, I know she was in a, we went swimming when we were still at the pool. She used a towel to change her bathing suit top. Dick. Yeah. Colin. I don't think she changed her bottoms. I don't, 
I don't, again, this is all, it's, I don't know these exact, I remember the top. I believe she changed into a black top, as I remember from her, her full bathing suit deck. Uh-huh. Colin, which I think was Deep Addy has cameras that could tell you exactly, Dick. Yeah, Colin. But I, it was, I believe, a rusty red, rusty bottom, and she changed her top to a black sports bra. I'm going to stop here. He's gone back to stammering, to not answering the question, and giving a whole bunch of other information that they didn't ask for. Dick Spittler is trying to figure out sort of what Moe's routine would be, and that's part of the victimology piece of the investigation, right? You want to understand the victim and her behaviors and what's normal for her and that sort of thing. And they're asking if Colin would know. And he's defensive here. He's he's nervous here. And so he's throwing a bunch of crap at them. He's basically redirecting, right? He's redirecting them to go look at the camera, a deep eddy, and see what, what she was wearing. They weren't asking that. So why does he feel the need to redirect here? What's that about? There's something here. I can't tell you what it is. But I can tell you. There is something here, Dick. Yeah, Colin. But I don't know if she wore that or if she changed into that before swimming. But I guess after, after swimming, she, before we went up to Pool Burger, she definitely changed her top. So he's being very helpful right here. I'm giving you this information. Yep, I'm sure about this information I'm giving you. This information that you never asked for. This information that I am redirecting you to focus on. because. I don't want to talk about what you want to talk about. I don't want to talk about this question about what her routine was. Now, why is that? Let's go back to it. Dick. Okay. Colin. So that's, and then slipped on like the sundress, which honestly I can't. I remember she had a blue, blue one that she had taken to our trip in West Texas in October, but I don't, I can't confirm like what color. For whatever reason, it's just not in my head. Again, you can see that. Dick. Yeah. Colin. Whatever color that was. Dick. Okay. Colin. So her routine. Sorry. I'm Dick. No, no. It's go ahead. Colin. Her routine would be, I imagine. I just came. I don't even want to say anything because I don't know. Dick. I got you. Colin. I can imagine what would a woman's routine be. Dick, yeah. Colin, after coming home from a swimming pool, if it were me, it would, it had been like an hour and it's hot and you're like, whatever, two hours. Dick, yeah. Colin, so maybe, un, maybe the swimsuit was wet. Maybe not. I have no idea. Dick, I got you. Colin. If it were me, I would potentially change out of a swimsuit, but I can't, Dick. No, of course. You're not, you're not entirely sure. I get that. Colin, never worn a Claire. You don't know. You don't know her habits. Dick, no. Colin, no, I really don't. Dick, yeah. Colin, no, but I'm, I mean, I've, I've not been a woman. I don't know what, I think leaving this with Colin saying I've never been a woman is as good as any a place to leave off. The video is getting too long. Stay tuned because we're also going to hear inconsistencies and a huge difference between the way Caitlin is portrayed in court and in the media and what Colin initially says. See you in part two as soon as I can get it edited.